Hi everyone and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm sharing my favorite card recipes for using critters. To demonstrate I will be using one stamp set for all the different ways and this is from the latest release by my favorite things. This stamp set is called Special Delivery, but no matter what critter stamp sets you use, you can follow the recipes and end up with adorable cards. So my first and uh, easiest recipe is to create a scene. Usually in the stamp set you will get critters along with different elements that you can use. This time I do have a couple of cards. I'm going to use the one that has kind of a flat top so that I can stack up different elements there. I'm working on Inna Solar White cardstock. I will stamp with alcohol friendly ink. This is extreme black by my favorite things since I am planning to use my alcohol markers to color everything. Now if you like creating little scenes with your critters, then it is a good idea to have in your stash those type of uh, dyes that cut out hills or trees, snowbanks or even waves, so that you can create kind of a ground base for your critters to live in. And these type of dyes are really versatile, if you like creating scenes you can use them throughout the year. Now, I did share that before, my go-to alcohol markers are my tree blends. I have a collection here. These are the only ones that I have and they do the job just fine. The black ones are the older version with the fine tip nib. The new ones are the brush ones that have a brush tip, which is kind of similar to the Copic ones. So this is the bunch of markers that I have from this collection and they do the job just fine. No more are needed for this uh, craft room. So I like them just because I get the light, the mid and the darker shade in one barrel so I don't have to fuss around and look what matches perfectly. And I always like to do really quick coloring. Here I'm using the mid shade and I'm not even going to use the darker shade to make my life easier. For the suitcases I went with browns, I also stamped a bunch of those gifts and I kept most of the critters white. All of them do have uh, green accents on top of them and then I used the matching dyes to cut out everything. For my little scenes I usually go with blue background to represent the sky. You can do that with pattern paper. Here I'm using cardstock that I am going to cut out with this lovely dye that gives a lovely finished double stitching all around. Another way to create your background is to do some blending with shades of blue or even some watercolor wash. Now I want to cut out the inside of the window because when I place it on top I don't like how uh, white it looks. I want that to be completely transparent so I'm using my craft knife. I like to create an X there and then I can go in with my scissors and cut out around all that border leaving a white outline. After all there is already white outline on the outside of the cutout. I like adding little details and finishing touches like that on my cards. I think that uh, little details do make a difference on a card. These little details may turn a card design more time consuming, but at the end of the day this is my hobby and I like spending time in my craft room, cutting out and playing with different elements, so I don't really mind. Now if you want here you can add some acetate so that you can get some glare which is going to add an extra detail here. However I'm going simple, I'm just going to stick two of my critters inside the car and I'm making sure that one of them, the bear, looks like he has his head outside of the window. Now I did use one of my dies to cut out this snow bank. Of course if you don't have such a die you can always use your scissors and cut out a curve on a white piece of cardstock. And when you have backgrounds for your little critters to live in, you can make them even more um, uh, detailed if you like. So for example, you can have even more snow banks one on top of the other for extra dimension and depth. You can use different sizes of trees to give more depth. Also, you can use houses like little ones far at the background. You can use clouds on your sky. The sky is the limit here when it comes to backgrounds for your critter scenes. And if you like creating such cards, you can build up slowly your stash with dyes that can be used for your backgrounds again and again. Now, just for the fun of it, I did stack one of the critters, the bunny, on top of the car. If you like small fonts for a sentiment, then this is perfect. It comes with lots and lots of different sayings that you can use throughout the, your, the holiday for your cards, like Merry Christmas, Let It Snow, Be Joyful, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. 
ho, 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 cozy Christmas and so much more. Plus it is small and really inexpensive. I went with uh, Happy Holidays, I did white and boss it on black cardstock. And then on a scene like this one, you need to add snow. For that you can go with splashes, you can do nouveau drops, you can even use a stencil, a snow stencil with uh, embossing paste. I went with gems. My second go-to recipe when it comes to stamps with critters is to have them uh, picking through windows. This recipe always ends up in a super fun and uh, cute card. So if you have a cover die that gives you lots and lots of windows, you can use that and have different uh, uh, critters coming through those windows. If you don't have such a die, this is a very old one that I keep on using again and again. You can always use a circle die. I'm sure you have one on your stars. Just cut out a few windows here and there on a cardstock. Of course, you can go with squares. You can even use a star die if you have to create a window. Just be creative. And depending on the size of your critters, you can have a bigger or a smaller window. In my case, the stamp that I'm using gives you lots and lots of critters, but they are all tiny. So I'm going with this die since I have it. I'm not throwing anything away. I will use both the outline as well as the squares. Now, just because I love that mention, I am using these uh, very thin strips of foam tape by Darius. These are really handy to have, especially when you want to add uh, foam tape and add dimension on such a thin outline. If you don't want to go that way, you can always cut out the same outline two or three more times so that you can stack one on top of the other to get uh, some dimension. I'm placing this on top of an A2 card. And then I'm going to glue back in all those little cutouts, the squares. I'm going to stick them directly on top of my card base so I end up having some dimension. Hopefully you can see the windows there. Now I'm placing all the critters as well as a bunch of gifts. I did stamp all the critters from the stamp set and I did very quick and simple coloring, just adding a few touches of red on everything. For this card I'm going with a color combo that is guaranteed to give you lovely results, white, red and touches of silver. Now this cover die gives many windows, I don't have many different critters to add on all of these, so I'm going to use some of the trees from this new stamp set. Actually I won't use the stamp set, I will only use the die so that I can cut out different trees from uh, glitter cardstock. Now, another way to fill in the windows is to have duplicates of some of the critters. Just make sure that as you place them, you don't have two identical ones next to each other. Another way would be to add just some gems, or you can even turn some of the windows into shaker windows and have some confetti shaking in there. And all I'm doing here is sticking down some of the trees that I have cut down. I'm mixing in some windows, smaller and taller trees, just to make it look more interesting. And I cannot have a Christmas card without adding some sparkle. I do have sparkle from the glitter cardstock here, but I'm going to uh, add even more by adding tiny little silver gems. And in this uh, stamp set, which is called Iconic Christmas, there are lots of sentiments. I will use one of them. I am going to white emboss it on the rectangle piece that fits right inside the center, which I'm going to stick there, but this time I do have foam tape at the back, so that it is going to be raised just like the outline, the grid. Here are some close-up photos on the second card for today, having the critters peeking through windows. And for my last recipe, I like to use my critters to dress up word dies. We all have big word dies that can be the focal point on top of a card front, but uh, it would make it even more fun if you use some critters picking from behind the letters or have them standing on top of them. This is going to turn your card looking more fun. I'm going to use for uh, demonstration this die from the latest release by my favorite things and I went with the one that says peace. I used the double stitch rectangle dies to cut out a green panel and I will do some tone on tone stamping just to add something extra on that background. Now I'm uh, trying to find out which side is up and down from this rubber stamp. This is a big rubber stamp, 6x6. Six six. It has um, Christmas sayings on top, all over it, which is perfect for backgrounds, for Christmas backgrounds. And it is from the latest release by my favorite things. 
My green piece is quite small and it's going to be covered completely from my rubber stamp. I couldn't use the magnet here, so just to make sure that this is not going to move on me, I did add a little bit of adhesive at the back. Now I am stamping with Versa marking. I'm not going to do any embossing. If you want, you can go ahead and do that for your background. I just want to have a tone on tone look, which is very subtle, but at the same time gives some visual texture at the background. With all the lights on my studio, I don't know if you can see the effect that I got, the tone on tone one, but you will see it better in the photos that I will add at the end of the video. So I use the die to cut out the word piece and I'm not throwing away the, the negative. I will use it as a template so that I can place all the letters uh, nicely aligned and uh, nicely spaced in between them. So I'm just using a T-ruler to make sure that my template is placed correctly. I will secure it with a piece of washi tape and then I'm going to place all the letters inside. I do have some foam tape at the back of the letters so they are going to give me some dimension. And I don't have only card recipes for critters, I do have lots of card recipes for many things that I know they are going to give me great results. So here I am using one of my favorite color combos, gold with dark green and craft. I think that these go beautifully together. So since I'm not working on a white card base, I don't want to have a white border around my critters. That's why I'm going to stamp them on top of craft cardstock to match the color of my background. Again, for these critters, I'm going very simply with coloring. After all, they are so tiny. All I'm going to do is to use my Prisma colors. Prisma colors on top of craft cardstock give beautiful results. I'm not even going to use Gamsol to blend out the color. You can do that if you wish. I'm just going to add a little bit of white, very subtle, and some touches of green. And again, I will use the matching dies to cut them out. Of course, the stamp set that you are using and the design of the critters is going to determine how you're going to use them on top or around your word die. So you can have a critter standing on top of the letter E or hanging from the letter C. It really depends on the designs that you are using. Here I'm using designs of critters that have only heads. So the only way I can go around with this recipe is to have them picking from behind the letters. I'm going to finish off this design by adding some uh, gems. These are uh, gold gems by Spellbinders. So today I shared some of my recipes on how you can play with critter stamp sets. I did make sure to demonstrate all my recipes by using just one stamp set, but you can apply these recipes on any critter stamp set that you have at home. I hope that this video was helpful, that you got inspired, there is a list with all the products that I used down below in the description area and on my blog. Don't forget to like the video, to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and also leave me a comment down below and let me know if you want me to share even more of my recipes when it comes to creating cards. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I hope you all have a lovely day.